your car is clean, but it needs to be decontaminated. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today we're going to go through the steps of decontamination with our decontamination kit. Some people have heard of clay bars. They think you use a clay bar to decontaminate Ivan. And we're here to say not really. You can, but there's much better ways of doing it. First of all, you're going to be washing your vehicle. Now, before you even wash the vehicle, one step of decontamination is to get rid of some of the things that these other chemicals won't get rid of, and that is using All Clean. All Clean is our all-purpose cleaner. It's pre-diluted 15 to 1. Great for doing your wheels and tires, but also for getting those nasty insect remains off and bird droppings. So that's why we include it in our decontamination kit, just in case you did that wash and they didn't come out. Right? Exactly. So how would they use All Clean Ivan to take care of the bird droppings, for example, uh, before we even get to our decontamination exactly. towel or any of these other products? Spray it on, let it dwell a few seconds, and then wipe it off with a clean, wet microfiber. You don't want to use a dry microfiber for this. You want one that you've taken out of your wash bucket to get that off. I was going to say, not just wet, put it in your wash bucket. Yeah, exactly. Have that left over. Yeah. Okay. So versatile. More videos on All Clean in the description below if you're curious. How do I use this on wheels and other things? But it's there just so you have. Exactly. Next, our iron remover. Now, we use our iron remover very differently than most. It's one of the most expensive chemicals in the detailing line, whether it be us or other companies. But other companies will have you spray it willy-nilly all over the vehicle using probably this whole bottle. It's two things when that happens, Ivan. Yeah. Smelly? Yes. And expensive. Normally our products smell great. This is not one of them. No, but this one works yeah. and it works very well. You want to do this after you've washed, but you right. actually want to leave your soap or your rinseless wash. So incredible suds or rinseless wash on the paint. Exactly. And then you implement the iron remover. Right, and you implement it using our perforated synthetic decontamination towel. Now on our website we call it a clay towel, and the reason we call it a clay towel is simply because that's what the industry calls it. And if we were to name it something else, yeah, it'd be hard to find. But when you search a clay towel, this is what you're gonna get. Some call it SEO, we call it detailing magic. All right. We actually do call this the perforated synthetic decontamination towel. Uh, our SEO guy said, there's no way anyone will ever find no, it exactly. That. So we will continue to call it that in videos, but when you get it on our website and when you get it in the mail, it will say fine grade clay towel. It'll appear right. in this packaging, lovely, all wrapped up like that. Exactly. But you actually don't use it uh, in a big circle, you use it in force. So. Right. Now, what this does in combination with the iron remover is the iron remover, again, industry pre-existing names. We didn't call it an iron remover, that's what the industry calls it. It's actually not an iron remover, it's a rust converter. What it's doing is you have a beautiful white car and you have those little orange dots, even after you clean it. Those are caused by iron particles coming off your brakes and they're molten at that point, they're hot. And they sort of etch into your paint just a little bit and they stick. Yeah, because clear coat is plastic. Exactly. They come off so hot that there's that bonding. Exactly, it just sticks there. Now, you can spray this on and you'll see these beautiful red tracers coming off wherever you have one of those dots. The problem with that is it's actually not removing the iron. It's just working on that rust stain. So we want to mechanically remove that iron. And that's where the perforated synthetic decontamination towel comes in. And using the two in conjunction, and it's very simple. Like Nick mentioned, you have your incredible suds or your rinseless wash on the panel. One spray on the towel, one spray on the panel, where you spray it on the panel is where you deposit the towel and then agitate with no pressure. And you'll hear the contamination, you'll feel it through the towel. And as you go, all of a sudden, oh, I don't hear it anymore. I don't feel it anymore. That's when your paint is decontaminated. Now, a lot of people suggest, and so do we, to let the iron remover dwell. In our case, the iron remover, yes, we're letting it dwell after we've removed that ball of iron. And we say ball of iron, it's so minuscule that it's not going to damage anything on your car. Don't be afraid. Don't have this, you know, cannonball idea. It's just a very, very minute piece of iron. But that minute piece of iron, if we don't pluck it away using the decontamination towel, it stays there. And even though you've put the iron remover on, it continues, it stays, it's not going anywhere. You've removed the rust stain around that little ball of iron, but you haven't removed the ball of iron. Couple of things, you yep. want this towel soaking in your wash bucket. Yep. So you want lots of lubrication, which is actually nice because if you press too hard, the red microfiber part of this that holds all the yep. liquid will actually 
released liquid, giving you more lubrication. And if that liquid was your incredible size of rinse and wash, yeah, it's got lubrication in it. So exactly. That's where it's soaking. Right. And before you use it. Yeah. And our iron remover, speaking of lubrication, has lubricants and surfactants in it. It's important, Ivan, that this is in your wash bucket. Exactly. And when you take it out, you want to fold it into fours. Exactly. The reason we want to fold it in fours, and this is the design of the towel, we have the perforations that you see here. So you see a bit of red through here. And we have a diamond weave microfiber behind it that holds a lot of liquid. And that's the combination plus no pressure points. If you happen to put a bit of pressure, you've got a lot of moisture in here. You've got a lot of rinse and wash or incredible suds. So if you do accidentally put a bit of pressure on here, it's going to exude the beautiful lubrication out of the bottom of it. So protecting your paint from those pressure points. One side of the towel per panel. Yep. Then you can get four panels. I like to dunk it back into my bucket, release anything that you think may be on that towel. Right. I'm not going to see anything unless I've used this on bug guts. Exactly. Yeah. And these towels last a long time, properly maintained. I mean, one question people are going to have is, yeah, I've used it. Paint is smooth. Amazing. Yeah. Now, how do I store this thing? How do I rinse it out? And yeah, I've said it, you've said it before, rinse it underwater, but then do what? Let it dry. And once it's dried, you take it, you roll it back up, and when you're rolling it, now you're not putting the decontamination surface against itself. You have a layer of microfiber between it and the next one. And from there, put it back in the box, we shipped it in. Man, that's genius. So Ivan, I've decontaminated the paint with the iron remover, with right. the towel, but there's two products left. Next, we rinse the vehicle off. We remove the iron remover. An iron remover is not something you want to use as the last step with a rinseless wash because you do need to rinse the iron remover. But then we use the water spot remover. Now, water spots, you may or may not have water spots on your vehicle, but I can guarantee you, you have mineral contamination. Now, we use the decontamination towel with the iron remover first because mechanically, we're going to remove some of those minerals using the decontamination towel. That whole process, right? Right. But now, the ones that are left over, they've embedded into the paint. And if you know what a water spot looks like, it starts off as a beautiful bead of water. And as detailers, we love beads. That bead of water, through a capillary action, the minerals are actually attracted to the outside of it. The sun heats it up, it dries it, and those minerals actually get hot and etch into the paint just a little bit. Now, if your vehicle is protected with ceramic coating, ceramic gloss, quick beads, and you wash it on a regular basis, water spots are not gonna be that much of a consideration. But, you still need to use water spot remover. And if you have a ceramic coating and you feel that your ceramic coating is a little flat, it's not beading like it used to, there's a good chance it's simply mineral contamination on it. And sometimes it comes in the form of a water spot, sometimes it's just mineral contamination. If you're in the north and you drive where they put salt on the roads, the side of your vehicle is not gonna bead by the end of the winter. That's where this comes in. It, it goes totally flat. Yes. I'm in Utah and that's what happens. Spray some of this on after you decontaminate with a towel. Yeah. And even if the water beading has been restored a little bit after you use the iron remover in the yeah. towel, it just snaps back after water spot remover. Exactly. And there's nothing in the water spot remover to make the water bead. Nothing at all. It's just we're taking that mineral contamination that we don't see, unless it's a water spot. A water spot we see, but the general overall mineral contamination we don't see. And if you live by the coast and you're lucky to have those beautiful salty air in the morning and yeah. the beautiful dew, your beading is going to be great on the sides, but maybe not on the upper surfaces of the vehicle. Again, water spot remover for that. Now, water spot remover, if you actually do have water spots, you'll need to agitate with the rinse -less wash or the incredible suds after. So you spray it on and then just take a really damp microfiber towel and start agitating. That was in your wash bucket. Exactly. Yep. And that way you, you have the lubrication and the water spot remover will do its job. Then again, this one you have to rinse off. So you could agitate, or if it's more of a maintenance decontamination process. Yeah, a little light mist. And then rinse off. Exactly. But if I'm polishing, I'm always going to agitate the water spot remover in yeah. with the damp towel. Exactly. Now, final thing we have here is our tree sap remover. Now, tree sap remover does much more than remove tree sap. It also removes tar and rubber deposits. So if you like doing burnouts, you'll know what this is for. Yeah. Uh, but... Not every vehicle has tar on it. Not every vehicle has rubber, but it's there in case you need it. And if you have just like a nasty old vehicle that's been oxidized and you know you just, it just feels rough under your decon towel, yeah. this whole process, 
and you know you're going to polish after, but it's just like, how much have I really done? Like, I don't know. Try this as your final step before you polish. Exactly. But if you know you've been doing burnouts and you'll know that you have, and you have that rubber accumulation behind the wheels, or you have a tar because you drove through the tar, this is actually one you want to do first. Okay, so tell me how you use the tree sap remover in those cases. So if it's tar, spray it on, let it dwell, rinse it off. You may need to agitate with a rinseless or incredible suds dampened microfiber towel. So good to use this with a damp towel. Exactly. Tree sap remover. Right. And if you actually have tree sap on your vehicle, which eh, this is what it's designed for, a little bit sprayed either on the paint, make sure the paint is cool, dry, and clean. Spray it on, let it dwell a few seconds, and then gently rub with a microfiber towel. And you may need to repeat the operation a couple times, depending on how old the sap is and how long it's been sitting there. And don't be surprised, unfortunately, like water spots, the sap may have etched your paint. Well, one other reason I think it's important to mention this is, it's at the end of this process because often, I wanna kinda see what happens with the decon towel exactly. and the iron remover before I try this. Exactly. Because maybe it all comes off and I thought it was one thing, but it was something else. Right. With, with this three stages of decon, yes. especially if you're agitating with the water spot remover, you've done a lot of steps by this point. Exactly. This is kind of your last step, like it's not coming off. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so if it's etched, what are my options then? Like polishing it out? Polishing is the only thing that's gonna remove an etching or improve. And etching. And we would never recommend someone using their fingernail to pluck off tree sap. No, no, no. Right? Okay, so we're not Great. recommending that. Great way of scratching your paint. If you want to scratch your paint, you can do that. But no, this will really, um, does it soften up the tree sap? I know there's different types of tree sap as well. Right, there's deciduous and coniferous. This works on both. It does. Tree sap's not fun. This will be your friend. This even works on fingernail scratches. Yes. Under door handles. Right. So a lot of door handles, people think that there's scratches that's there. It's actually residue from your nails that touch the paint that leaves a residue. This wipes it off rather easily. If this don't do it, then I don't know what will. Exactly. With that, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, leave them below. And we also have links to all these products and this incredible decontamination kit right below. We'll see you there.